Welcome to the Get Well With Me podcast. I'm your host, Adrienne of AdrienneHeart.com. I love you no matter what you eat. And our philosophy here is excellence, not perfection. Together, we explore the healing benefits of a mostly plant-based lifestyle while embracing the idea that happiness is homemade and our life is only as good as our mindset. Please subscribe to this channel on iTunes, Google Play, CastBox, YouTube, or your favorite listening app. So let's get into the episode. Hey, it's Mindful Eating Day 2. Yesterday, we talked about our habitual questions. What am I eating? Where did it come from? Is it harmful or is it helpful? And am I thankful for it? Today, we are going to shift our perspective. Uh, Maybe you're familiar with Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's been a few years since I read that, but it was really a powerful book and stayed with me. Um, He talks about beginning with the end in mind, just reverse engineering, like what is the outcome? What is the result? Uh, You know, what is the thing that we're trying to obtain or accomplish or the person that we're trying to be? And then working our way backwards, like what are the action steps and the things that I do and the person that I need to become in order to have that result? So he goes super deep and he goes into like beginning with the end in mind at your funeral. What are the kinds of things that you want people to say about you? What is the legacy that you want to leave behind? Are you proud of the life that you lived? Um, And just reverse engineering your life from your funeral. Now that's super deep. We're not going super deep. We're going to stay on the surface here and talk about food. (laughs) So don't worry. We're not going to go there. But I want you to think, Uh, on a habitual basis. I mean, habitual thinking um, is happening. It's happening all the time. Unfortunately, most of it's negative. So my goal here in this uh, series, this mini series on this podcast, is to help us shift to habitual healthy thinking, especially when it comes to food, nutrition, and how we see our bodies. So let's do that now. We're going to use just a really simple example. Okay, it's dinner time. How am I going to feel after I eat this? So there's a couple components. There's the how am I going to feel physically? So whatever it is that's for dinner, when I'm done eating this, am I going to lean back in my chair? Am I going to place my hand on my stomach? And am I going to say, oh, yep, that's pretty much the feeling that I'm trying to avoid. So there's that. So if I eat this, how am I going to physically feel? And it it could depend. So if you have some stuff that you have to do after dinner, you know, like maybe we want to eat something a little lighter. Or maybe it's Thanksgiving and you're totally have made peace with the fact that you're going to be unbuttoning your pants and leaning back in the recliner after dinner. Like, that's okay, too. But the whole thing is to, like, notice it, be aware of it, be prepared for it, and to not have that happening automatically and continuously. Um, When we eat more than is healthy for us, we're asking our body to do a lot of work. And it's okay to ask our body to do a lot of work, but we just want to make sure that there's a payoff there. So if I eat maybe a little too much papaya and strawberries and, um, you know, hummus and pita bread or something, like, I'm, I'm getting a lot from that. I'm getting so much positive effects from that. But I still want to consider how am I going to feel if I eat all of that? Am I going to have the energy that I need to do to fulfill all the obligations in my day, to feel like I had a productive day? Um, If I think that what I'm going to eat is going to satisfy me, I really want to be aware, like, what part of me is going to be satisfied? Is it really our tummy, like our stomach that needs to be satisfied? Is it our taste buds that need to be satisfied? Is it 
the emotional hole in our heart that needs to be satisfied? Like what needs to be satisfied and what actually satisfies it? So if we are truly hungry, we are always in control. If we only have foods around us that aren't so healthy, you know, we can be mindful that if we decide that we're going to partake of them, that we aren't going to eat too much. So that would be a fair trade-off. And you know what? When we begin with the end in mind, how will I feel if I only eat a little bit of this standard American trash food? Well, better than if I ate, you know, too much of it. What if then, you know, we kind of switch that around to something that we know is going to, you know, back to the papaya, right? So let's say we choose to eat a half of a papaya, super filling, so much fiber, sprinkle a little seasoning on there, maybe some everything but the bagel, eat the seeds or don't eat the seeds. If you do eat the seeds, it's going to knock out any potential parasites. You might be like, why did she say I have parasites? You may have parasites, especially if you eat like fish and undercooked meat or actually you can get parasites in a whole variety of ways um like just from maybe working in your garden and then not washing your hands but regardless papaya seeds hello they're amazing um but where i'm going with this is like what are you going to feel like after you eat it physically and then how are you going to feel about yourself from a self image perspective and 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 i i didn't realize this but some people when i use the word self image they immediately think like will that make me feel fat or will i think of myself as fat um but i want to clear that up so their self esteem and their self image self esteem is how you feel about yourself like i'm worthy i'm good enough i'm not good enough whatever is how we're feeling about ourselves Our self-image is how we see ourselves. So in our mind, the picture of us that we see. Like, for instance, you look in the mirror and what do you see looking back at you? You don't see your reflection. You actually are seeing your self-image. But that's getting way into the study of the inner mind. So I digress. Let's, Let's roll it back here. So how will I feel after I eat this? If I have a papaya, I'm gonna feel proud of myself, proud that I made a good choice. I'm going to feel healthy. I'm going to know that that papaya goodness is inside of me and that it's doing everything that it was meant to do and all the healthy enzymes are working and my digestion is working and it's filling my body up with the good stuff and it's pushing out the bad stuff. I'm going to feel um, not only proud that I made a good choice, not only physically well, But I'm going to have this overall feeling that I am well, I did well. I'm going to feel empowered that I continue to make healthy choices for myself. I'm going to feel thankful that only I can make these healthy choices for myself. I'm going to feel satisfied in my stomach because the papaya has a lot of fiber. I mean, it's going to fill you right up. You're going to eat half of that papaya and you're not going to be looking for more food. I promise. You're going to be like, whoa. Um, So how will we feel? after we eat this. So whether we're looking at um, like a junior bacon cheeseburger, I know I always bring that up because I've just eaten so many thousands of them in my former days. And, you know, I always felt like a junior bacon cheeseburger worked for me because it wasn't too much. So it was kind of like that example of like, yeah, I was going to do fast food, but I wasn't going to have a soda. I wasn't going to have French fries. I was going to have a junior bacon cheeseburger. And if it was like lunch and not a snack, I'd add chicken nuggets because that's super healthy. And then whatever kind of little toxic sauce that I wanted to dip it in. And I didn't feel so bad afterwards. And it's because I was really good at portion control. But did I feel good about myself? Did I feel proud that I made a healthy choice? Did I feel like I had all the nutrients and food as medicine in my body that I needed? No. And you know what? I just wasn't even that aware back then. I was just like, what can I eat that will make it so that I'm not hungry for an hour or two and won't make me sick to my stomach? And that was kind of like, you know, I could just live on junior bacon cheeseburgers and wake up wraps and hash browns from the Dunkin' Donuts. And I could eat that for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I did. So um, 
that's, I'm living proof. That stuff won't kill you right away. But over time, it will. And it was. But it didn't. And I'm here today eating papayas and loving it. So mindful eating, guys. Um, how am I going to feel? How am I going to feel after I eat this? And if I don't like the outcome, if I'm not going to feel proud of myself, if I'm not going to feel like if I think I'm going to wake up in the morning and regret this, like, you know, that feeling you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, I have a food hangover. Why did I eat that Mac and Mancos pizza? Something is not right inside of my body right now. Or I feel totally fine, but I really, I just don't feel proud of myself. I don't feel like I did the right thing for me. I don't feel that I was a good example of health and wellness. So begin with the end in mind. And again, you know how I feel about this. I love you no matter what you eat. I love you no matter how much you eat. And I am not telling you what to eat. What I'm doing is just giving you a framework for habitual, healthy thoughts. And mindful eating is the way to go because diets obviously are temporary and mindful eating is forever. So I just want to encourage you to... Um, of course, get in those plant-based foods. Of course, get in those anti-cancer foods. Share with me your favorite anti-cancer foods. Um, get in those berries. Get in that green tea. And enjoy your guilty pleasures. But just begin with the end in mind. That is the message for today, guys. And I'm sending you so much love. And I'll see you on the next one. Mindful Eating mini series number three coming at you tomorrow. Before I go, I just want to say thank you for spending your time with me. As we change into a healthier version of ourselves, we can feel a sense of loss, loss of our old identity, and fear that the people we surround ourselves with will reject us for changing. It can feel lonely and frustrating like no one understands. When I started getting healthy, I wasn't getting much support from friends and family, so I started looking online. I came across so many radical, all-or-nothing approaches. I felt judged, alone, and even ashamed. If you can relate to this overwhelm, and you like the idea of striving for excellence, not perfection, then you have found a safe place with this podcast. If this message speaks to you, and you feel it could encourage someone you know, please share it with them. Remember to hit subscribe and until next time, be well because living healthy doesn't have to be hard and we don't have to do it alone. I'll see you on the next one. In the meantime, shine brightly.